what's up everyone so this is going to be the second video in a series covering Fourier series so we're still actually going over the orthogonality relations however I'll leave a couple of links in the description below in case you're uh, behind and or maybe uh, you're further ahead um, so yeah again we're the only reason that we're going over the orthogonality relations right now is simply because it, it's a key part to finding the Fourier coefficients a sub n and b sub n and again we're going to be going over that um, later on in the future um, but yeah, so so in this video, we're going to be evaluating the same integral, which is going to be i is equal to the integral of 0 to 2 pi of sine mx sine nx dx. Uh, but instead of using trig identities, we're actually going to be using complex exponential, uh, the complex exponential form of sine, uh, the sine function. Uh, hopefully this is going to reduce down our workload a little bit, but we do have to be a little bit more careful with the steps that we're taking. So in case uh, you're not familiar with the complex exponential form of sine uh, of a sine function, let's just say sine of ax, uh, the complex exponential form is simply going to be e to the i ax minus e to the negative i ax all divided by 2i. And so we're going to be using essentially this uh, plugin for uh, our integrand here. So let's go ahead and actually get rid of this guy. All right. And so then our integral now becomes e to the i mx minus e to the negative i mx all over 2i and then that's multiplying e to the i nx minus e to the negative i nx all divided by 2i dx. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because um, you guys might be familiar with the fact that, well, integrals of exponential functions are a lot more simple than uh, pr it's pretty much the, the, the easiest type of integral that you can solve. And so then putting it into this, this form, is, it should make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, so yeah, let's keep going with this integral. And then we end up getting a negative 1 over 4 in the front. And that's simply because i times i gives you a negative. Then we have 0 to 2 pi. And then now we have e to the i mx minus e to the negative i mx times e to the i nx minus e to the negative i nx dx. Um, so yeah, okay, so actually let's go ahead and FOIL this out and then we get a negative 1 over 4, oops, integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then so this first term with that first term we get an e to the i. If you look at that they have in common both, the exponents have in common the ix, and because we're multiplying them, the exponents just add, and then we end up getting an e to the i m plus n times x for our first term. And then now we distribute it into this guy, and we get a minus e to the i m minus n times x. And then now we have this guy with this guy. It's going to give us a minus e to the, let's go ahead and leave the negative with the n, or sorry, with the m, and we get this. And then for our last term, we end up getting a positive e to the i, or actually a positive e to the negative i, m plus n times x dx. So actually, let's go ahead and try to clean this guy, uh, this integrand up a little bit. So we have a negative one over four, sort of two pi, um, and let's go ahead and try to group these together somehow. Um, and the reason I want to try to group these together is because our lives are actually going to be a lot easier. So I, I know I said that we're gonna we're putting it in exponential form to to easily integrate stuff, but there's actually a nice little trick here um, where we won't have to worry about that at all. And we're going to actually end up seeing the how similar um, this method is to the previous method. And uh, e I mean, eventually we have to get the exact same result. Regardless of the method that we're using to solve this integral, we should get the same exact result as our previous video. 
Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and show a little bit of resemblance. And we have this term with this term, right? Notice that the only thing that's different between the two is that the exponent now has a, has a negative in, in the front for this guy, and this guy has no negative in the front. So that's gonna be my first term. And I'm sure that you guys are probably seeing where I'm going with this. So that's my first term. And then now this term with this term, they don't really look that similar, but let's start, let's do it piece by piece. So first of all, let's go ahead and factor out the, the negatives that they both have in common. And then I'm gonna have an e to the i m minus n times x. And then this guy here, let's go ahead and factor out a negative from the exponent. And what we end up getting is an e to the negative i, right? Because we're factoring out that negative. And then we get a positive m minus n times x and dx. And then you'll notice that this first term is exactly the same thing as this guy, except that uh, this term has a negative in the exponent. So if you're not really familiar with the complex exponential form of trig functions, here's a little hint of, or here's a little, um, yeah, I guess a little hint of where it is that we're going with this. So earlier we had said that sine of ax is equal to e to the i oops, e to the i ax minus e to the negative i ax divided by 2i. Well, the cosine function, the complex, complex exponential function, complex exponential form of cosine is e to the i ax plus e to the negative i ax, and then we divide it all by just two. So they're slightly different, but they are different. And so that if you notice, this, these, these two terms resemble some sort of a cosine function, and then these two terms re resemble some sort of a cosine function, right? And the only thing that it's missing is this factor of two, right here, this factor of two. But that's easily, we, we can easily fix that by simply going ahead and, let's go ahead and just take this guy out like this. And if you think about it, when we divide it by two, and then the only way we can get rid of that, that fraction of two right there is by multiplying both sides by two. And so we end up getting something like this. And so then now you can see that if you have two exponentials, two complex exponentials adding like this, then it's just two times the cosine of that, right? So then this integral here, go down here, ends up becoming negative one over four integral from zero to two pi of two times cosine of m plus n times x, and then minus, this guy is the exact same thing, right? But now the argument is instead m minus n times x. And if you were to go back to the previous video on this series, you'll notice that this is exactly what we got when we plugged in the trig identity for sine mx, sine nx. And uh, again, it, it, this little bit of work that we just did can make up for all of the work that we did with the trig identities. But again, we had to be a little bit careful with the way that we did things because when we're foiling things out, especially with the uh, my 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 poor poor choice of of m and n instead of like alpha and beta or something like that. Um, yeah, like there's there's a lot of room for mistakes when we're doing it with this method, but I think that it's a very good and um, useful skill to have to be able to know how to do this kind of a problem in these in these two different ways. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, realize that this is actually everything everything else from here is the same exact thing, right? All we have to do is just make a couple of assumptions. So let me go ahead and clear the screen up for you guys and then we'll continue on with this. Okay, so now now that we wanna evaluate this integral, uh, let's go ahead and do so. So remember that in the, pre in the previous video, uh, we were basically saying that m and n were integers and we had different cases. And so our first case is going to be where m equals n. Um, and if you don't know why it is that we're doing, we're going about this reasoning, re reasoning, I highly encourage you to go back to the previous video so that you can follow through with our logic. And um, yeah, so in this case, we're gonna use m is equal to n. And we make that assumption, 
our integral is going to reduce down a little bit, right? Because our first term here is going to become a 2 cosine of 2m x, and I'm just going to go ahead and choose this m, and I'll replace all of my n's with just an m. And my second term is just going to be an m minus n for the argument. And essentially, that's just 0. And so then I end up getting a cosine of 0. And then cosine of 0 is just 1. So then I end up with just a 2. OK, and then now I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 2. And I get a negative 1 half in front, integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine 2mx minus 1 dx. Now, integrating this is going to be pretty easy. We're just going to do a negative 1 half. Then this cosine integrates into a negative sine 2mx divided by 2m minus x. And then we're evaluating this from 0 to 2 pi. OK, and let's go ahead and plug in our limits. And we get a negative 1 half, negative 2. Oh, negative sine 4m pi divided by 2m minus a 2 pi oops 2 pi and then if we plug in that 0 well we get a sine of 0 minus 0 and then all of that is just going to be 0 so we end up with just this and then if you remember because the argument here uh, uh, 4m pi is is an integer multiple of 2 pi then this entire expression is just zero and again if if that doesn't really make sense to you we we i hopefully diligently covered what i meant by that in the previous video so i i encourage you to go back to that one and so then we end up just getting a negative one half times a negative 2 pi and we get a positive pi that's exactly what we got in the previous video so of course, that's what we should get. Uh, that's the beauty of mathematics, right? Because regardless of the way you do things, you should always end up with the same exact answer. Uh, but OK, so then now let's go ahead and consider the second case. And our second case is where m does not equal n. And if n doesn't equal n, then that means that I'm basically just, well, actually, I'm going to bring this color back. Uh, this first term here, the m plus n, I'll just replace it with an a. And then the second term here, I'll just replace it with the b. And now we can go ahead and evaluate this. So in, I end up getting a negative 1 fourth integral from 0 to 2 pi, 2 cosine of 2x, or 2ax, sorry minus a 2 cosine of 2bx dx. And then I'll go ahead and uh, take a couple of steps in one. I'm going to factor out the 2. And I'm going to integrate this. And what I will get is a negative 1 half integral from 0. Uh, well, actually, no. I'm integrating it already. So I end up with a negative sine of 2ax divided by 2a and then a plus sine 2bx divided by 2b integral from 0 to, or limits from 0 to 2 pi. And then this keeps reducing down to a negative 1 half of negative sine 2 or 4 pi. 4 pi times a divided by 2a plus a sine 4 pi b over 2b. And then again, sine of 0 plus sine of 0 is just going to be a 0. So then we end up just getting this. And again, using the same reasoning as the previous video, this is 0, and then this is 0. And so then we end up getting that this is all 0. And so in the end, our final answer is going to be that i is equal to pi if m equals n or 0 if m does not equal n. And there we go. So 
what do you, if if you guys remember we actually didn't just stop here we wanted to make this look a little bit cleaner a little bit nicer and what we ended up using was the Kronecker Delta function and again this is a very useful and very handy mathematical tool where Delta of let's just say M and N will be equal to 1 if M is equal to N or 0 if M does not equal N and so then if you look at this expression here it's very very similar to this expression here so really what we can end up doing is we can end up writing our expression I in the form of just a pi times delta mn and again we, we covered this a little bit more in detail in the previous video so uh, yeah and in the next video we're gonna be covering a very very similar integral but instead we're gonna be using cosines okay and awesome thank you guys